his specialty decks. And Wings actually has an interesting ban, ban here going for Trainer Louise because Trainer Louise, like you said, is spell banned. Hold that title. So we will be getting a new champion this season. And Trainer Louise is going to open up with Furnace in the middle. And that's a pretty unusual card. We watched a whole lot and not seen a ton of Furnace. Giant from Wings. Yep. Beat right. down. Now, I think the Furnace is going to work really well here for Trainer Luis because those minions are going to struggle attacking into a Furnace. Uh, the minion or minion horde can walk right into it, and the double fire spirits can blow them all up, and that's a big problem for the deck. Yeah, I, th I think you actually call this giant Night Witch double minion potentially from Wings here. He's, he, Wings actually doesn't have a very wide deck diversity. He plays just like two or three decks almost every game, but he's just insanely good at them that he can outplay bad matchups because he feels so comfortable with it. So yeah, it looks like this is going to be giant Night Witch, minion beat down. The question for me is, what is Trainer or Luis playing because you don't see a lot of common furnace decks out there. I think he might have Hog Rider. This is a very popular meta deck in the past. There was either Tombstone or Furnace okay. as kind of the building trickle damage card. And the Fire Spirits do great because the tower, which you might see right, but we don't because Wings defends with the Giant. The Fire Spirits, one lives and jumps onto the tower and it's really good trickle damage. Great timing there by Wings. He played his minions just in the middle of the furnace uh, swings, got around the Fire Spirits. The Electro Wizard has to come down and try to loosen it up. But Great job by Wings using his giant to block all the fire spirits and grind it down one after the other. Uh, neither of Trainer Luis's furnaces have contacted the tower at all, and Wings' towers are sitting with zero damage on them. Yeah, I don't think Wings wants to take any trickle damage whatsoever. He's going to play it very safe. Ooh, good fireball right there. Gets one of the goblins. Fireball comes down defensively, will knock the Night Witch back. Beautiful defense right there from Trainer Luis. That's one of the things you're going to see at these high level of plays. They're playing poker as much as they're playing chess. And being able to predict your opponent and make prediction fireballs like that are really crucial to winning these games. The fireball came down before there was any defenders, and it managed to hit the goblins and minions that were defending. Yeah, and then the defensive fireball from Trainer Luis knocked the Night Witch back, which allowed the two goblins that survived to take it down. We have one minute left in regulation. That means double Graveyard. elixir time. Graveyard coming out on the left side from Trainer Luis. This knight is tanking. The log comes down. Log actually does better against the graveyard now on defense because all the skeletons spawn in on the outer ring. So you can aim it a little better than before. Yeah. Fireball's coming down from either player knocking down. The Electro Wizard takes care of the Night Witch coming in. Both players have done great jobs on defense. No tower is really significantly below 2,000 health. No. So we have, we're probably going to go into overtime. The key port here is that now we're in double elixir time and people are going to be earning their, you know, elixir ugh, twice as fast. Which of these decks do you think have an advantage? I want to say the graveyard deck. If the graveyard can build up really fast, especially Trainer Luis has a cheap cycle. He can, I think he has a minimum of 10 elixir cycle. So in double elixir with graveyard, he can cycle up Electro Wizards, Minions, Knight, and then go in with a huge push for the end. But we'll see if Wings is able to build up a huge giant push. He's not playing the giant in the back, but he's playing it to tank the units at the bridge so the tower can actually focus onto the graveyard. Giant has the most health for its elixir cost in the entire game. You get a lot of hit points whenever you play your giant, so it's great to defend things like that. And this is a great push by Wings, taking the furnace down a little bit. Um, but none of these giants have been significantly effective. I don't think I've seen a single giant connect to a tower yet all game. No, but that miner was doing some serious damage on the right-hand side. Trainer Louise actually has fireball and arrows, which is a pretty decent counter to Wings' beatdown deck. I think he may have picked this on purpose by banning out the Elixir Collector. He knew that Wings wasn't going to play three Musketeers, and he thought he'd play this giant deck. So he's playing a deck with so many answers to minions, so many answers to these other tanks, and it's really showing. The only thing that Wings is able to man manage to get through with has been the Miner itself. Yeah, the Miner is just so good at getting trickle damage, and this might be a decent-sized push on the left-hand side. Giant Night Witch going in. The Furnace is going to come down to defend against this. He was getting some trickle damage on the right. Fireball comes down to take care of the minions. Defensive minions will come out, and this might be the stop of the push that Trainer Luis is looking for. I actually think Ooh. this is going to go really well for Wings here. He's going to take this tower down really low. We might be taking this tower go down. No, really low. Now, get Wings has Fireball and Zap and Log. That's going to be enough to finish it off with a spell cycle. Yes, all he has to do is throw the Fireball and Zap it. He's going to win this game. We're in overtime, so the first tower to go down will wrap it up. There's the fireball. Myron is going to come in. Trainer Luis knows the game's over. Wings is going to take game at number one. And that just, we, we're talking about how good Wings of a player is. He had nothing to defend against the giant push on the opposite lane. Yeah, we're in game number two. Now, Wings really likes that split push style of gameplay. Three Musketeers obviously plays like that. You're putting Musketeers in both lanes. Yep. And he likes this deck for a very similar reason, because you're right, you can giant push down one lane, minor minion horde uh, in the other. Now, let's see if he's going to keep the same deck or if he's switched it up. So far, so looks like the same giant deck to me. And it looks like Turner Louise is busting out the log bait, which yes. he said he was one of the best in the world, so 
We'll see what he's playing here because with the Princess taken out, I think a key thing you're going to see in this matchup is Wings is going to fireball that Princess every single time she comes out. Because if Trainer Luis is left free to use Tornado and Princess on the minions and minion horde, it's going to get really bad. Great defense there by Trainer Luis Beautiful activating tornado. the King Tower. Yeah, and Wings actually has Fireball and Log, so he can save the Log for the Goblin Barrel and be able to Fireball the Princess as it's placed next to the towers and get some good value onto the Fireball. But the Princess is going to lock on for, ooh, only one shot. Uh, so if this is your first time watching competitive Clash Royale, that tornado earlier activating the King Tower is really key. The King Tower doesn't fight normally. You can see Wings' tower is just sitting there, just happy to watch the battle. But if you either lose a tower or the King Tower takes any damage, it turns on and becomes a third defensive tower. A really difficult thing for Wings for the rest of the game is that any miners that go on those towers back there are going to have two or three defensive towers shooting it, really mitigating the amount of damage a miner can do. Yeah, and Trainer Luis has the capability to tornado the giant to the opposite lane while have all three towers shooting down at that giant, which is going to take it down pretty fast. Now, Trainer Luis's game plan, unlike a lot of the decks like Wings, where he's going to put this giant, put a lot of stuff behind the giant and just try to roll over the tower with a big attack, you're going to see Trainer Luis try to get a little bit of damage here and there, just chip it down slowly. One of those last two cards in his deck is a rocket that is capable of doing almost 500 damage every time it's cast. If Wings' tower ever gets down to about 1,000 health or less, expect to see rockets finish the game off. Yet yeah, Night Witch is going to connect for one jab in there and bring that tower down to 802 health, triple digits on Trainer Luis's tower. And Trainer Luis actually made a beautiful play. Wings played the minion horde to split push. Wings tornadoed it together and dropped an ice spirit to kill the entire horde. Great prediction there. Now he threw the goblin barrel really far back. The reason why you throw the goblin barrel all the way back there is you hope your opponent plays log before it lands yep. and the log misses the goblins all together, causing them to waste their spell. Great tornado pulling the miner away. All three towers wow. finished off and the princess lives to fight another day. Log is going to come down to try to mitigate the giant damage. No hits on tower from that giant. Princess Knight will be able to take down the Night Witch. And Trainer Louise is looking to go really aggressive on the left-hand side here. Wings has a bit of a damage lead here. Oh, and the Goblin might get in there and get a stab. He does! Two so, stabs! Oh, we're down to 1,000 health now. Expect to start seeing the rockets coming out. Now it's a race. Will the giant on the right side finish off that tower before Trainer Luis's, like spells and defense can pull it off for him? Tornado's going to pull it all together. Ice Spirit's going to come down, try to take care of the minion horde. Only catches three of the minions. Zap goes down onto the Spirit Goblin, the second giant coming in for wings here. Now, one of the decisions that Trainer Luis made with his deck was to not play uh, a defensive building. He played Tornado instead. The downside, he's got nothing to pull the giant away. And one giant punch gets on, bringing that tower down to 431. No more damage is dealt. A minor fireball might be enough to finish it off. And the fireball's coming down. Pulls the it tornado's back. gonna pull it back. Zap has 10 HP. Oh, it's oh, still look at it. Trainer Luis. Wow. wow. 10 health left on Trainer Luis's tower, and he pulls off the game, and that's why he calls himself among the best in the world. Wow. When he said he was the best, one of the best log bait players in the world, that match. It's clearly not true, because we just saw two people with disadvantaged decks outplay their opponent and win. So now we're going down to a game three between these players, and we'll see whether they're sticking with their favorite decks or mixing it up. It looks like Trainer Luis is sticking with Spellbait to me, and we'll see what Wings is bringing out for this game. Oh, Wings has bats this time. So Wings is playing a different deck. We'll see what happens. Miner coming out from Luis here on the left-hand side. Miner's going to get in a few chip shots. Prince is coming down in the back. We might be seeing a Hog Rider rocket yes. deck from Wings. This looks like Hog Rocket to me, so expect... Ooh, the arrows come down. So Trainer Luis playing a slightly different version. Maybe he swapped out the log uh, for arrows in his version. Give him a little bit more versatility. Yep, Hawkeye's going to connect for one hit. Minion Horde coming down on the right-hand side. Let's see if Wings is able to defend this. Uh, Ice Golem's come down. Ice Golem is a really good uh, defense against the Minion. Oh, Ice Spirit coming in too. And we see right there, Ice Spirit and Ice Golem will take down a Minion Horde with the help of the tower. Trainer Luis is playing a, a Balloon Cycle. So the goal of this deck here is it's a really cheap deck. You can easily get back to your cards. Oh, the Balloon hit! Ouch! Okay, so his, what Trainer Luis is going to be trying to do here is play Balloons pretty often. Anytime you see any sort of like air troop come out, like if Bats are gone or Princess is out of hand, then you will see the Balloon come out and try to connect to a tower for huge damage. Yeah, P.E.K.K.A. versus Hog. So we see P.E.K.K.A. Balloon. Wow. Trainer Luis has to feel pretty comfortable with this matchup. Pekka is yep. great at stopping ground-based pushes. I believe one of the last two cards in Wings' deck is a mini Pekka. Um, and I think Pekka's going to fight both Hog Rider and mini Pekka pretty effectively. 
Yeah, this peck is actually going to connect on the right hand oh, side wow. here for one shot. Even oh, the ice spirit. She's one of the biggest hitting troops in the game, and that's two, two. swings. Will a third swing take down the tower? Three swings. Wow, wings puts his hand on his forehead as he realizes that is a huge disadvantage to take. Now we're about to enter double lifter time. Plenty of time to turn this around. He does have damage on Trainer Luis's top right yep. side, but he's going to have to take down that tower. And I can I think you can assume wings as bottom right tower is like a lost cause. So how can he defend the left side tower from these balloons? <laughs> Princess is going to come in, Ice Golem to tank the Fire Spirits. Bats will stay alive and be able to take down this Balloon. Great defense. I mean, countered the Balloon for five Elixir with only two Elixir of his own, the Bats, and he's got a counterattack coming already. Arrows come in to take down the Princess. Here comes a Hog Ice Spirit push on the right-hand side. Trainer Luis does not have the Elixir to defend with a P.E.K.K.A., so this right-hand tower might go down for Trainer Luis here. Yes, we're going to trade towers right here. Oh, six health left on Wings' tower, but that's plenty within range of a Miner or an Arrows. Wings does take the tower. 30 seconds left for Luis to tie it up, and he's trying to go for the two-crown victory here. Rocket goes down onto the Balloon. No Chief padding rockets here. He does connect with the Balloon. Might see a Hog coming in, but it might be aggressive play. I think, Wing yep, Wings is going to play smart and defend here. He's expecting the Miner maybe to come in on that side. 12 seconds left, Trainer Luis has to do something, whether it's Miner or Arrows, to take it down. Looks like he's gonna opt to Arrows it to take it down, but that's three Elixir out of hand that you'd like to use to try to get this Balloon closer to the tower. Oh, the Princess focused onto the Fire Spirits and might be able to take down this Balloon. Death damage, is it gonna connect? Yes, it does, 390 HP. The Hog is gonna be able to connect to the tower on the left-hand side. And Mini Packers right behind it, chopping the Knight down. That's gonna connect onto the Ice tower. Ice Spirit Bats! Wings with the comeback! Wow, game three, turnaround victory. Trainer Luis was set up for a two-crown victory, but...